In this video, we're tracking Tropical Storm Nicholas as it continues to affect the Gulf Coast and areas just further inland. Then we have two other systems in the Atlantic to talk about as the tropics just won't let up. And last but not least, we're forecasting a multi-day severe weather outbreak from the Ohio Valley all the way into the Northeast. Welcome back y'all, Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Tropical Storm Nicholas turned into a hurricane just moments before making landfall in the Matagorda Peninsula early this morning. 75 mile an hour winds, storm surge, and heavy rain battered the coast for hours Hours as the storm basically stalled out. Now, Nicholas is once again a tropical storm as it continues to cause problems along the Gulf Coast. We're going to take an in-depth look at those problems right here in a second as we continue to talk about the weather. Alright, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And once again, we have two main features that we're looking at. If we zoom in up here in the Great Lakes region, you see we've got a big storm up here going into Canada that's got a little feature drawing behind it. A little bit of a frontal boundary that's going to bring us some storms today and tomorrow and the next day. That's yet another thing that we have to get really in-depth on in this video and if you want to skip around to the different parts today I have timestamps in the description uh, if you only want to watch the parts that pertain to you uh, but we're gonna to get to this here in a minute but let's start off by talking about tropical storm Nicholas as it's now inland and still causing problems from Port Arthur all the way over to New Orleans as it does look like it's now moving a little bit at least it was almost stationary for a while that's good news for Houston I think a lot of people especially on the northwestern side of Houston uh, dodged a bullet with this one but that's bad news for Louisiana let's check it out on the weather models all right, here's a look at Tropical Storm Nicholas right now on the North American model, the three kilometer version. And right now we've still got winds out there, 50 to 60 miles an hour, and it's moving towards the north northeast at eight miles an hour. And I think it's gonna speed up a little bit as we go into the future. Here we are at 10 a.m. If you wanna keep an eye on the time, it's always above my head up there. Uh, and remember, that's gonna be an Eastern uh, time because that's where I am. But as you can see, you can still see the swirling motion here. We've got a pretty big precipitation shield on the top end of the storm. And then we've got this boundary feature on the southeastern quadrant of the storm, uh, which is uh, producing a bunch of supercells, probably a lot of water spouts out here. Uh, and that may actually become a problem later today if this uh, storm can eject north and east enough, as maybe some tornadoes will uh, be affecting the southeastern Louisiana area, which uh, is unfortunate because there's still a lot of people down there that are without power from Hurricane Ida. Uh, well, seriously, like hundreds of thousands of people still without power. Um, and it's been quite a while since we've had Ida. So if you know anybody down there, just in case they're not connected, if they're not paying attention to the weather, uh, make sure you share this video with them or just text them and let them know, hey, watch out today. You've got a tropical storm or at least a portion of what was a tropical storm coming through your area. And Ryan Hall, y'all said that you might have a tornado or two. So just make sure you're weather aware today. As we go later on into the day, the first thing you're going to notice out here in southeastern Louisiana is going to be the heavy rain, okay? Between noon and 3 p.m. That's when it's going to get really heavy. Uh, we're going to see some isolated flash flooding problems because of that. Also, we've got this big stationary uh, precipitation shield here in the extreme southeastern portions of Texas, getting ready to move into to the uh, border area between Texas and Louisiana there. And guys, once again, the main threat here is gonna be flash flooding. Uh, we saw some really bad flash flooding last night in extreme southeastern areas of Texas, especially south and east of Houston. Once again, thankfully Houston, I think you dodged a bullet here in the downtown area, uh, but areas just to your south and east, man, they're getting a ton of rain and there's more to come, especially to the east and to the northeast as we go into the future. So let's pull this thing out a little bit more. And here we are at 9 p.m. tonight. And as you can see, there's a couple things uh, that are interesting that's going on here. Uh, the center of circulation is still way back here uh, in, in portions of Texas and maybe just getting ready to move into Louisiana. And normally in a situation like this, you'd have the most heavy precipitation right here next to that center of circulation causing, you know, an absolutely astronomical flash flooding situation down here. And it's still very possible that we see some very bad flash flooding, especially in southwestern portions of Louisiana and this eastern portion of Texas. But it's not going to be as bad as it could be because we still have that wind shear uh, that's taken a lot of the convection here and lofting it off to the east. So a lot of this energy that's getting all the way over here into the western panhandle of Florida and central portions of Alabama uh, was supposed to be right here in this portion of the storm. But thanks to that upper level wind pattern, it's kind of tearing it apart and sending it this way. So all that energy is getting spread out rather than being focused in one area, which is a good sign. Uh, but still, don't let your guard down. Flash flooding, deadly flash flooding is still going to be occurring down here in this portion of the world. So make sure you're ready for that. Now, the, here's the thing that isn't so good about that upper level wind pattern. It's going to meet up with some northwesterly flow here as uh, these storms are forming on the southeastern quadrant of that low pressure system. Once again, probably causing enough spin in the atmosphere uh, to cause 
uh, water spouts and tornadoes along the extreme southern portion of this storm. I think southern Louisiana and all those places we were talking about a lot during Hurricane Ida, uh, I think you guys are under the gun today for, you know, an isolated uh, tornado or two. I don't think this is going to be a huge tornado outbreak, but absolutely, uh, there is uh, almost certainly going to be at least one tornado today. So if that one comes down your street, it doesn't matter if this is a big tornado outbreak or not. So just make sure you have your plan in place. Know what you're going to do if that tornado warning comes through. Once again, watch the radar today. If you see these streaming bands, these feeder bands, Bands, uh, working into the storm and approaching from the west or from the southwest coming this way that you probably got some rotational thunderstorms there that are going to cause some problems i think prime time is going to be uh, from 11 p.m tonight all the way into 4 a.m in the morning so that's unfortunately uh, going to be a situation where we have a naders in the dark but it doesn't matter as long as you got something on your phone that's going to send you alerts uh, or a NOAA weather radio plugged in with batteries. Uh, that thing's gonna wake you up uh, so you can uh, put your plan into action there. Let's go even further into the future. And once again, the center of circulation still way back here on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Um, but most of the convection in the rain is being lofted way out here to the east. So we're going to have some heavy rain in Alabama and uh, Florida and portions of Georgia on Wednesday. And the tornado threat is going to become extremely less here once it gets once we get to this point. OK, because that uh, uh, southeasternly quadrant of the storm still way back here with those upper level, those lower level jet stream winds. Uh, and I don't think there's going to be enough shear to cause a lot of uh, uh, tornado problems there. If we push this all the way out, that thing's just going to spin there for a while and continue to bring more showers and thunderstorms into the Gulf Coast. Uh, but for for the most part, after we get uh, past to today and then the early morning hours uh, tomorrow, I think the worst of Nicholas is over for now. So it's been a hard one to forecast, but I think we did a pretty good job. But now it's time to talk about the next one. All right, here's another look at that five day graphical tropical weather outlook that we're all too familiar with uh, this time of year. Uh, Nicholas is already a storm. So now I'm calling this storm number one and this storm number two as we go into the future. These are the next ones that we have to watch for further development. And we're going to start off with storm number one here off the east coast of the US. We're going to be taking a look at this bad boy on the NAM three kilometer model once again, but we're switching over to the precipitable water view. And once again, this is just a good graphical representation of where this storm is and where it's going to be and how strong it is and all that stuff. By Wednesday at 7 p.m., we're probably going to see some sort of organization out here with these thunderstorms uh, just off the coast of South Carolina and North Carolina and just north of the Bahamas. Uh, but as of right now, still, uh, like I've been saying the whole time, uh, this thing doesn't look very concerning right now. It doesn't even look like this uh, uh, will get to a tropical storm. Uh, but if it does, I think that's probably uh, the worst it's going to be right now. Now, obviously, that can change. This could surprise us and end up becoming a hurricane. Uh, but pretty much every forecast model and, and my experience looking at these things uh, tells me that we really don't have much to worry about with this storm, okay? But I'm going to be watching it closely and updating you on every little uh, aspect of it as we go forward. As of right now, it does look like maybe some scattered showers and thunderstorms will be possible associated with the outer bands of this, you know, disorganized rotating area of thunderstorms uh, on Thursday uh, as this thing goes by. But it is going to get caught up in a trough and more than likely continue to head up this way uh, as we go into the future. So it might graze uh, the uh, Cape Hatteras area, the outer banks of North Carolina, and once again, some heavy rain and some thunderstorms here and there. But right now, I really don't see any big problems out of this. If anything changes, I'll be the first one to let you know. So make sure you subscribe and all that good stuff. And let's go ahead and talk about the next one. All right, here we go. Storm number two. This is the one I've been talking about for a really long time. I, I you know, I'm kind of concerned about this one. And you know, there's a lot of time for this one to change. Okay, this is way out here. This is, <laughs> this is over here in Africa. All right, it's nowhere near affecting anybody in the United States right now. And uh, the hope is that it never will. But I've been doing this for a long time and I've seen storms just like this that seemed like they weren't going to ever affect us uh, end up becoming big memorable storms over here on the East Coast or even in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so I want to do everything I can to give you as much of a heads up as possible. I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, the worst case scenario. I'm going to show you the, uh, the best case scenario just so you're prepared for everything. Uh, it's important to know that even when I talk about the worst case scenario here, that is not an official forecast. I'm not saying you should go out and board up your houses right now in South Carolina or in Puerto Rico or anything like that. Uh, I just want to show you all of the possibilities. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, so this is the current infrared satellite imagery for the whole Atlantic Basin. Uh, you can see once again, Africa over here, the United States is up here. You can kind of see Nicholas over here. This is the group of thunderstorms we're watching north of the Bahamas that may end up becoming something off the coast of the Carolinas. And this is storm number two. Okay, this is the uh, wave that's 
coming off of Africa right now that may end up becoming a hurricane, possibly even a major hurricane, at least until it gets to this area right here. Uh, it's really got nothing stopping it from, you know, uh, strengthening a lot. And it's once it gets right here where we really don't know what's going to happen after that, okay? Because this thing's so far out, the, the forecast models are really unreliable at this point. But what we do know is it will likely stay together as some sort of tropical cyclone and at least make it into uh, somewhere in this region right here. Now, from there, it's got a couple different options that it can go with. Obviously, it can recurve up into the Atlantic Ocean like Larry did, or it could continue to go to west and then recurve at the last moment, or it could go west and then recurve a little bit less and hit the, uh, you know, uh, eastern portion of the United States or it could cruise down here south of the Caribbean islands and enter the uh, Gulf of Mexico, or it could come over here and then die out right around Puerto Rico or something like that. All, <laughs> all of those possibilities are, are in play right now. Uh, so, you know, I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen, but those are the possibilities. Obviously, worst case scenario is going to be that this hits uh, uh, the Caribbean islands down here, the Dominican Republic and Haiti and Puerto Rico as a big hurricane, or if it just misses those islands, it comes up here to the East Coast or also into the Gulf Coast. That's always a possibility too. So, uh, as of right now, I have no reason to believe that's going to happen, but let's look at some forecast models to see what they think. Okay, so here's a look at the spaghetti plots, okay? All the different GFS members put together. It paints us a picture uh, as to where these models think this storm's going to go. It's all over the place right now, uh, but as we get closer, we'll get a little bit more of a defined area of where this is going to go. As you can see, some of these models do have it recurving, okay, up here into the Atlantic, and that's what we want to see. We want to see a fish storm. The fish are well more equipped to handle hurricanes uh, than <laughs> people are, uh, so we want to see it curve up there and then eventually die out up there in the northern Atlantic. But some of the models, almost an equal amount, show this staying south, okay, and then slamming right into the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico there. And based on what I'm seeing with the upper air pattern and everything else, uh, I kind of agree with that. I think it's going to take us a more southern track. Uh, I hope I'm wrong, but here's the thing. We also don't know the intensity of this storm. If this thing takes the southern track, it could still just be a tropical cyclone, tropical depression, tropical storm, or low-end uh, category one hurricane uh, by the time it gets to Puerto Rico and then the islands tear it apart. Uh, but the only thing that I'm sort of uh, confident on is that this is going to take a more southern track. Uh, as far as the intensity goes, we won't know until we get closer. Here we're looking at the GFS model, the 850 millibar uh, winds. It's going to be a good way to visualize where the storm is. Right there she is. As we go into the future, that's probably going to be a, you know, a tropical storm or a hurricane here around Sunday, September 19th. Today's the 14th, so, you know, we're still quite a ways out here. Things are going to change. But as you can see, it's taking that more southern track, just like I think. But the GFS, once this gets close to the islands there in Puerto Rico, the GFS tears the storm apart and it just disappears. Despite us having a pretty strong high pressure here to the, eject this off to the west and a big trough over here to kind of keep it, you know, further south, which is not a good situation in this sort of setup. Uh, thankfully, the storm just completely goes away. But what causes that? And, and do we buy it? So if we look at the wind shear values here, we can see exactly what causes it. So we've got this piece of energy over here, this sort of uh, trough in the uh, the wind shear anomalies here uh, that kind of builds up right as our storm is moving into it, okay? And I've talked about this before. No matter how strong hurricanes are, they can't plow through troughs. They can't plow through ridges. Uh, so the GFS knows that. And once it meets up with this little feature right here, look at this. It, it enhances the wind shear there and takes away our storm almost completely. If this is what happens, if this storm actually does get blocked by this uh, feature right here, uh, there are two possibilities. The first possibility is yes, this storm is going to completely get torn apart and we don't have to worry about it anymore. But if this storm is a little bit stronger, okay, if this thing is like a category two or category three storm at this point, and it's uh, moving west at a pretty good clip. Uh, once again, storms can't plow through troughs, but a storm like this could actually uh, ride through the southern end of it, okay? Kind of absorb it and, and use it as a slide almost uh, to go south of the Caribbean islands. And then once it gets past it, uh, obviously it'll deteriorate and weaken some there. Uh, but once it gets past it, it could reform here south of the Caribbean and then come up into the Gulf of Mexico. So. Those are the two options if the GFS is correct. I promise you, as we get closer to the storm, I'll have more concrete facts for you. I just wanted to let you know everything that I know right now. All right, last but not least, we're gonna talk about this severe weather threat we have up here today in the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley regions, and then tomorrow in the Northeast. Storm Prediction Center does have a slight risk out there from Michigan all the way down into Illinois. And let's see why, as we go into the future today, that big storm's gonna trail down a cold front and cause some, uh, maybe some supercell storms, but certainly a big line of storms uh, from Michigan down into Illinois, and we're going to see some hail, some damaging winds, and maybe a few isolated tornadoes, especially the further north you go on this line. In fact, if you live down here in Canada, uh, 
and you're along this line of storms right here, watch out for some big storms today. You guys are going to get worse than us as you're closer to that central area of low pressure. You're closer to that forcing. And I do think you're going to see some straight line damaging winds and possibly a couple tornadoes today. But here in the States from Detroit down into Indianapolis tonight around 9 p.m., we're going to have some big thunder boomers out there. Main threat's going to be damaging winds. But once again, a tornado or two cannot be ruled out. These storms are going to kind of uh, continue into the night tonight and bring some heavy rain into the Missouri area, the Southern Illinois area, maybe along the Ohio River there uh, into Ohio. But for the most part, they're going to die out as it meets up with some energy from uh, Nicholas here. And that energy is going to spark up more storms tomorrow during the heating of the day, uh, which brings us our slight risk of severe weather tomorrow up here in the Northeast. And because the Northeastern portion of the United States is going to be closer uh, to that central axis of energy up there with our storm, I do think once again, we have a little bit of a higher threat for uh, severe weather tomorrow up here in the Northeast, especially with those isolated tornadoes uh, from, you know, 4 p.m. tomorrow all the way through 9 p.m. Uh, from central New York all the way up through Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Uh, but even south of that, where the wind shear isn't as bad and we're not going to have as much rotation from West Virginia into Pennsylvania, portions of Maryland, uh, and then eventually into uh, New Jersey and, and uh, uh, Connecticut and Massachusetts as well, uh, you guys are definitely uh, going to see some, uh, you know, uh, severe weather tomorrow, some uh, small hail and straight line damaging winds in excess of 60 miles an hour here and there. I do expect to see lots of uh, tree damage and, you know, maybe some uh, power outages. Uh, and once again, I definitely think we're going to have a couple tornadoes come through, uh, but this is just a situation where you need to be, uh, you know, uh, vigilant and weather aware. You don't need to be scared. Be prepared. All right. That's all the weather talk I have for you today, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, if we see any sort of uptrend for the pattern tomorrow with these storms in the Northeast or with our storm out in the Atlantic Ocean or with Tropical Storm Nicholas, I will be right back here with another update. So make sure you slap that like button, subscribe if you haven't already and turn those notifications on and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.